My name is Dr. Peter Harrop of the Analysts ID TechX. I want to share with you some of the research we've been doing for our report on transparent electronics. It uh, is a fascinating area. There are three ways in which it can improve existing silicon solar farms. And um, we're going to talk about more, but let's begin at the beginning. Here is the report. Yes, what are we talking about? Good start. Um, we're including in the word transparent, uh, translucent as well. Uh, obviously, there's more detail when you really look closely, but this is for simplicity. Uh, and it means um, patterning that you can see through that may be opaque material patterning or totally transparent materials. And those types of products are particularly important and those enabling technologies are important with metamaterials becoming important as a part of your uh, product. On the right you have printed split ring capacitors and uh, a little line for a printed inductor, that's your metamaterial and there it is enhancing a quantum dot product. So the overview is this, generally transparent electronics when you choose a category like displays or photovoltaics and so on is usually only a few percent of the demand for the overall product but that few percent is a few percent of very large figures and therefore we're talking about something that will be extremely large and the show is already on the road there are little definitions there where people talk of photonics in, in a very general way from terahertz to x-rays uh, and um, part of that is use of the word electro optics which is usually related to light and then there are different categories within that and transparent electronics and displays including displays slices across all of that there were glamorous things coming out. Xiaomi in China claims to the world's first mass production of transparent OLEDs. They've been around for eight years, but this is the first, they say, mass production. And it looks like it's floating in air, the image. It's not necessarily very good for outdoors in that it's not as bright as the other new innovation which is transparent micro leds which we believe can be very big business they use relatively little power and are more scalable up to billboard size and are particularly bright so they don't have the definition of transparent oleds but i think these two technologies are really complementary it's already happening. Uh, this is a subway window in China. You can see them in Shenzhen and Beijing uh, rolling out in the next year. This is one in action now. They're interactive displays and they are transparent OLEDs. You can see through them as to whether you're arriving at your station. Excellent application. So if we look at those uh, bigger, brighter micro LEDs coming in as displays in applications, these are the sort of things emerging. There's been uh, talk of the first micro LED TVs coming out. Of course, they're not transparent electronics. You can see that some of the things here either are transparent electronics or maybe for example bottom left there is talk of putting on the window of your car the front windshield a micro led display so that you don't have all the apparatus of projection of the image that you see now with uh, a number of the new electric vehicles and so on i'm not sure that's a majority view uh, but we have to accept that in some cases, 
the transparent options will be occurring, certainly with huge billboards with images floating in space. This is the solid culture greenhouse approach where they can adapt to the greenhouse or make a new one, uh, which optimally grows the plants by letting through the right type of light, which is that sort of magenta color and um, uses the rest to make electricity. As the greenhouses become robotic, that we believe is a very big opportunity. It's silicon solar in patterns and a luminescent dye. And it's deployed in Canada and the USA in quite a few places now. Now I want to bring you to this. A lovely example of many forms of transparent electronics is the robot shuttle. They're being trialed in about 30 countries now. Uh, they won't really take off until the robotics is legal, acceptable, affordable, and all those good things. But basically the idea is that in city centers such as the Toyota Woven City, a smart city they're building at the base of Mount Fuji, uh, little more than this will be allowed in the city center because it will reconfigure at the press of a button to be all manner of things uh, such as a school bus, a regular bus, a taxi, uh, but also a mobile library and all those things you see there. That's Toyota's pictures on the left and on the right. That's our picture in the middle. And we can imagine uh, that that would have the radar glass for the radar for autonomy at, at both ends. That's symmetrical. They never do a U-turn, these things. And that as they carry their whatever it is, 16 people or so, uh, they may have what is being offered now in Germany, which is translucent heaters that our laminate that go all over the internal parts and save a significant amount of the electricity, so increase the range. Uh, they would have probably micro LED displays that reconfigure to say school bus and to do advertising, as you see there, which would cover the cost of the school run. And the roof could well be multiple technologies such as translucent um, consisting of um, advertising on the top, advertising all round the bus, the, well, it's not a bus, a, a robot shuttle, and um, darkening at a touch, making electricity, you get the idea. So that's us. Uh, do keep in contact. Thank you and goodbye.